Hello, and welcome to the fifth episode of Holly Rambles. I'm not going to focus too much on, like, introduction, because I don't really know how to do that. So we're just going to, we're just going to move on to the interesting topic for today. And that topic is self-diagnosis. And the uh, two questions I, a I would like to ask before... I break it down is is it okay on one hand so is it something that um is it okay to do is it something that you know should be encouraged and uh can it be harmful so like i know this is like a sensitive topic for like many people especially in the disabled communities that i observe and somewhat feel a part of always hesitate to say I'm a part of any community because <laughs> I don't know I just have a bad rep with that but um I do think it's important to say that I'm within these spaces so I, I look and I observe and I see what people say about these topics and I know this is a very big topic a very big sensitive topic and uh considering that I want to make sure that I approach this issue you know, maturely. Like, I'm being mature, and I'm going to try to be honest when necessary. So, just to start off, I would say, if I'm asking myself the question, is self-diagnosis okay? I would say yes. But, can it be harmful and exploited? Yes. So, I think both of these can be true at the same time and I wanted to share some of my personal experiences about why I agree with self-diagnosis and why in some cases I do not or as I wouldn't even say like don't just some cases where I would be a little bit hesitant to support um, self-diagnosis in that situation and I think it is important to be very clear about this issue a lot of people make a lot of blanket statements and um i understand it it's great um, a lot of the times it's valid um but it just doesn't help much when it comes down to the harm it can cause or like those few issues where this blanket statement doesn't apply but someone's going to try to apply it anyway um so every once in a while you need someone to like break down these blanket statements and be like okay wait that sounds great and all but in these situations or if you look at it this way, that's where the problems can come up. And you got to be careful about that. Um, but just because you are being careful and being cautious about the problems and everything like that, that doesn't mean that you disagree with the whole entire idea. And I want to make that really clear. I think it's important to be realistic about the dangers of self-diagnosis and the various perspectives that you can approach the issues on like I feel like it does a disservice to the topic to not be able to thoroughly go over those different perspectives and those different avenues and I hope I can do that some justice today of course I'm probably not gonna be able to cover everything but I'm gonna try my best to cover as much as I can so I I, I think they'll be interesting to talk about the personal aspect of it all first for me. Um, so for me, uh, self-diagnosis was extremely important part of my uh, process of diagnosis and like understanding myself and getting to the place I am now. If I didn't, ha if I didn't feel like I could self-diagnose myself, I'm not really sure where I'd be in life. If we're being, if I'm being honest. I had to go through a lot of barriers in order to get the diagnoses that I do have. And then there's still some diagnoses that I don't have. So, so for some clarity with that, um, I got diagnosed as autistic um, in college. And I only went to pursue it because I was really struggling in college. And I was like, wow, I can't like I, I felt pretty certain that I was die, uh, that I had, that I was artistic. I felt really certain about that. Um, 
in high school, I would say. In middle school, I was questioning and I was like, what? Like, I can definitely tell that there's something off with how I behave in comparison to other people. Like, I wasn't really fitting in well and like things weren't going very well for me socially. And there was a lot of other issues that now I've realized are, you know, issues that a lot of autistics go through. But in high school, I felt pretty certain. Um, the way I actually felt certain is, if you didn't know, I have a brother that's autistic. And in my mind, like growing up, my brother was the image of autism. Like he was what everybody around me thought autism was in the only way it could be. And my brother is nonverbal and needs a lot of support um, to take care of himself on a daily basis. And that's not me. But I do also still need a lot of help and support just in different ways. And since I grew up thinking that that was the only way for autism to look, I would constantly find myself, you know, conflicted as to like, you know, why... I see a lot of similarities between me and my brother. Like there, we, there's some things that we have in common, but you know, it's almost like if you were to have a dial, like the scent, the severity of those uh, similarities would be a little bit different for us, but they'd still be there. And I would always wonder why. And like in high school, I had a little project that I was working on. Um, they were just giving us different syndromes and, you know, uh, different issues that can happen in the body, mentally, physically. And at the time it was called uh, Asperger's. Asperger's was on there and I was like, okay. Obviously we know now that a lot of people don't like to use, you know, that term to describe it. Um, and it's been removed from the, as an official diagnosis. It's now just called, at least here, it's called, uh, autism spectrum disorder but you know a lot of people online just prefer to say autistic you know but that's not the point of this uh at the time it was that other term um and that was what i picked for us to do like i'm i literally picked that out having no idea what it was and that's what the group that i have was gonna do so we use that as our topic and as I was doing the research, that's when I realized, oh my God, like I'm straight up researching myself. This is weird. And then I just started like a whole spiral of like analyzing everything about myself and my life experiences and my brother and I and like just everything. And after like doing a lot of research, because one, that was what I was supposed to be doing for our project. And two, because I was actually really interested now because I, I felt like I was learning more about myself as I did it. Uh, I started to feel really certain about that. Like, you know, genetically it makes sense. You know, there's a lot of autistic people in my family, uh, on my dad's side. Um, and there's probably a lot of people who are autistic who have no idea that they are. Um, and like, it's totally possible to have multiple kids with that, you know, multiple kids that are autistic and stuff. So like this, none of this isn't possible. This is very plausible and it would explain a lot of my experiences in life thus far. So after doing my due diligence, I felt like I was certain that that was me. And years later in college, I decided, okay, I'm going to go and get an official diagnosis because I'm struggling in school at, at times and I need support. I need something to help me. I need accommodations. So I go to try and get an official diagnosis so that I can get accommodations. And uh, luckily, I was able to find a way to do that that was affordable for me. But a lot of the times... Uh, the process is very inaccessible to people, very expensive or just not an option for a lot of people given their circumstances. 
But fortunately, I was able to come out of there and get that. And then I was able to get accommodations. And that's a whole other topic on its on its own that I can get into about how I struggled with the accommodations I tried to get. But I say that because that period of time in high school where I was researching and understanding myself, that is the period of self-diagnosis that I think is really important and that makes me always hold it close to myself because I can't ever tell someone that you can't go through that process because I know how impactful it was for me. Um, but I didn't, you know, I didn't use that as justification to do anything that I didn't feel like I had the knowledge or the expertise to do. But I did have that knowledge in the back of my mind for many years and didn't say anything about it. And I used, you know, the resources available to me to help cope with that self-diagnosis. And I think that that's completely valid. And um, we'll get to it later, but there's a lot of other reasons why I also think that that is completely valid because it's not, not everyone has the privilege to get a diagnosis like I did. So like, I don't want to take that away from anyone. That's really important to me. Um, so that's why I wanted to give a little bit of background on, you know, where this idea or like why, how I feel about it. I feel a little bit soft about it. I'm sensitive towards it, but I'm also trying to be very realistic at the same time and be honest. And I think that's really important. So I think it's really useful for me to kind of explain how I see issues, like a lot of these types of issues. Like I feel like um, I I'm kind of like a fence sitter. So like, you know, I don't often just jump into one direction or one side or like, I'm usually sitting on the fence, observing things all over, taking in information. And then I might, you know, at times scoot a little bit more to one side. Or like I might take a few steps back and like jump on the other side for a bit. And explore those alternatives. And, you know, come back to my fence and be like, you know, I understand. I understand where you're all coming from, you know. I'm just going to sit here though. Because like I don't know for certain. So I can't go out and claim that I'm, go I'm gonna go this direction when I don't know for certain. But I might feel, you know, more like agreeable with one side than the other, but I can't say that my agreeableness is enough to be certain. And that's something that's really important to me to clarify. Um, so there's this quote from this book that I read recently called The Meaning of It All. Uh, Thoughts of a Citizen Scientist by Richard P. Feynman. Hopefully I didn't say that name but uh, like too wrong. <laughs> but uh, the quote is that fence sitting is an art and it's difficult and it's important to do. Rather than go headlong in one direction or the other, it's just better to have action, isn't it? Than to sit on the fence. Not if you're not sure which way to go. It isn't. So um, the thing that really stuck out to me in this book is obviously they're talking about science and how that has an impact on, you know, our day to day lives in society. And how a lot of people uh, think that just because you, you study science, you can't be uncertain, you can't be a fence sitter. And that's just not true. Like. A lot of things in life, we just do not have access to all the information we need to be certain. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, there's nothing threatening about that. That's okay. As time goes on, you learn more and more and more, and you can fill in more of those gaps. But there's nothing wrong with admitting that right now, I don't have all the information. And this is how I feel about it right now, but that can easily change if I get more information, more facts you know, more perspectives, whatever it may be, um, I'm always willing to change my perspective with the more information I get. 
And that's how I feel like I am as a fence sitter. Like that's how I am with most issues. It's never that clear cut to me. And I take pride in the fact that for a lot of issues that really interest me, when I don't feel certain, I am comfortable being a fence sitter. It doesn't make me feel like I'm doing something wrong or it doesn't make me feel shameful. And I, I really try to encourage other people to feel like they can do the same thing. Um, I know a lot of people will take offense to that and uh, I get it. And this quote uh, from The Meaning of It All by Richard P. Feynman, it kind of shows you how it isn't necessarily a bad thing. It isn't something to fear and it doesn't mean that your opinion or your perspective is less valuable or meaningful or impactful. If you're uncertain and you're un you're able to admit that you cannot be certain, that's okay. So I tend to sit on the fence a lot with a lot of issues and I try to educate myself as much as I can and like expand my perspective by diving into as many angles as possible. So to visualize, I or be on the fence, but you know, I'm observing every possible angle and trying to take in as much as I can so I can make the right decision. And for me, that is really enjoyable. Um, but it's also a constant reminder of why life is so complex and uncertain. Um, nothing is as straightforward as I'd like it to be. You know, I wish it could just be like this or that. Just pick. Um, I rarely see issues that in that way. And um, I always am finding all these, ex like these variables or these extra perspectives or these extra issues or circumstances that change things just a little bit to where there is no exact one way to look at it for every circumstance. And I like that complexity, but it also makes life pretty hard. But I think that's the beauty of it, at, the beauty in life at the same time. We can't just pick an option a lot of the times because there are just too many variables involved. You know, there's variables that we haven't considered yet. There's variables that we don't even know about yet. And there's some variables that we just do not have the tools or the capacity to understand yet. So it makes sense to me to slow things down a little bit and accept that, hey, I don't know everything. And maybe I should sit in the fence a little bit and feel things out. I just don't like to jump into any particular side unless I'm certain that I am doing the right thing if I'm going to choose that side. So very often, you know, I will just sit in the fence and I might have more support for one side over the other for reasons that I'm pretty certain on. But I'm still going to I'm still willing to sit here and in the middle and take in anything I can get. And I feel like I determine that on a case by case basis. Uh, I think this is fair and that there's nothing wrong with this mindset. It's a pretty fair place to be. And I feel like it makes me pretty open minded and reasonable with a lot of the things I take in. I'm willing to listen to almost anything, even if it's something that I usually really don't agree with. I'll be okay with listening to it just because I want to know the reasoning behind someone who thinks that way. And that's just more context for me to help me, you know, build up my reasonings and my understandings. So when I think I know enough, I will make an informed decision. But I'm also open to learning more and ultimately changing my mind. Uh, nothing is set in stone and my understanding is always evolving. And I think that is the crux of science. That's the crux of life. So, like, I'm happy with that. And I think that it's important for me to be very clear about my, my mindset in this regard when I continue with the rest of this. So physical and mental health differences, I feel like this is really important to address. So obviously there are physical and mental health concerns. And I think that both of them require a different approach to the same question. So 
is self-diagnosis valid is self-diagnosis harmful you know both of these questions they change a little bit depending on what kind of health concerns we're talking about so we all know the word hypochondria or the obsession with the idea of having a serious but undiagnosed medical condition and a lot of us have had that anxiety where we think oh no uh, I might have something and you do a bunch of research and it's like oh no it looks like I have like 50 things and you know we've all been there at least once you know and there are a lot of resources on there are a lot of resources online but you know that doesn't mean that there's enough to remove the need for experts and I think that's really important to clarify um, when it comes to physical health issues there are just so many possibilities I used to be someone who was very interested in health and uh, I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be a nurse. I wanted to do so many things, but that just didn't end up happening. But as a child, I used to like take in a lot of content, a lot of medical content, anything I could. And I feel like also having my mom be a nurse and she would share a lot with me because she knew I had that interest as well. You know, I, I learned a lot about health and the body and, you know, things like that. So, like, in some ways, I was slightly more educated than some other people might be. But even then, I still can't claim to know it all. And I always encourage people to do their own research into their health concerns. So... If you feel like you might have some problem and you're not sure what's going on, do your research and look into it. I always encourage that. But I think it's also important to take that research and bring it to someone who can verify it. Whether it's a doctor or a specialist or somebody who has some expertise, I think it's important to do that. That's a step in the process. Now, obviously, not everyone can do this, but you cannot be sure your assumptions are right otherwise. And you should always, you know, move carefully when making any assumptions like that. And another thing that's really important is that I also felt like was conveyed in the meaning of it all is that just because you're a scientist doesn't mean you know you have all the answers and that you can't make a mistake messing up and making mistakes is part of the process that's how you learn that's how humans progress so there's going to be experts out there that get it wrong and there's going to be doctors that misunderstand or read something wrong so i that's why i think it's really important to also do your own research because it's almost like you are coming in there with the knowledge that you have and the doctor or the specialist or whoever it is, they can, you know, add their knowledge in, but nobody is doing all the work on their own. And I think that's really important because sometimes the knowledge and the research that you bring can help fill in the gaps that that doctor might have. You know, there's no way for anybody to have the knowledge of everything. The human body is just so complex and, you know, there's still things we haven't completely figured out. There's a lot of things that are rare and a lot of doctors don't even have experience with. So keeping all that in mind, that's why, although it's important to realize that you don't know everything, it's also important to realize that not everybody you go to knows everything too. So... Keep that in mind. We're all human here. You can all make mistakes. So if possible, get as much information as you can and go to as many people as you can to confirm or deny that information. But obviously, I know that this isn't something that anybody can do. This is this requires, you know, that you have re uh, good insurance and good resources and all this stuff. I am going to get to that later. But in an ideal situation... That is what you would keep in mind. So uh, some of us with chronic issues have researched so much about our pains. Like we've looked it up a lot. You know, we learn about it. 
and we come down to the conclusion that we might have some physical issue or something that's rare or something that um, is common with any other, yeah, you no, know, co occurring with any other uh, issues we might have. For instance, um, EDS. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. I think it's Ehlers Downlow Syndrome or something like that. Uh, I probably said that wrong, so I definitely hope you look that up yourself. <laughs> But um, that is something that commonly happens with a lot of people who are autistic. So a lot of people who are autistic, they're, they might have a lot of pains in their body. You know, it's a connective tissue issue. And if you have a lot of issues with that, that's not very common. Like a lot of doctors aren't going to immediately think to check for that. So you coming into the doctor with that knowledge of like, hey, I could potentially have this. Can we look into this? could be the difference between you getting the help you need or not getting it because not every doctor is going to think about that or consider that possibility. So I think that that is why self-diagnosis in the terms of physical issues can be really important. We can't assume we know it all, but if we're going through something and it's chronic and we're experiencing experiencing this like on a day-to-day -day basis i feel like we are gathering a lot of information a lot of knowledge and if we can make that match up with something we're researching i think that matters i think that knowledge and that experience and that understanding matters and i think that you know experiencing it yourself is a big factor in that it's, it's an important part of that process but I also think that, you know, even if you're experiencing something, that doesn't mean you have a full understanding of everything that's going on. Everyone's body is different. Everyone who's experiencing this disorder or this pain or whatever it may be, they're going through it in a different way. Because they're a different person with a different body and different needs. And I feel like it's important to be honest about that and be re realistic about that. So even though I know a lot about my chronic pains and I might assume that, oh, I have EDS, uh, you know, I'm autistic and, you know, a lot of people who are autistic and have pains, they, they have EDS. I can assume that or think that that might be likely, but I can only, you know, be certain of that to a certain level. Like I can't be 100% sure that that's the case, but I will try to incorporate things that will help me and things that I'm learning about that are safe for me to do to try and make my pain more manageable. And if that stuff helps me, then that's great. But I can't ever sit here and say that I'm 100% sure what I have. I'm probably like 80% sure. But I think, you know, being transparent about how much certainty there is is an important part of this. I won't risk hurting myself or others, you know, if I just because I want to assume I know enough to tell people what they can and can't do with their bodies or to try to make assumptions about how to treat myself off of the things I think I know. The reality of it is, is I don't know enough. I'm not a doctor. I'm not educated on the human body to its full extent, you know, and that's OK. But I do know a lot. And I have done research and my experiences are valid. And so are the experiences of everyone else who goes through anything chronic or who has anything going on with their body that they've extensively looked into. These are all things that can be true at the same time. And I think that's really important to clarify. You can know a lot about your chronic issues. You could already be diagnosed and be very educated on your issues and or you could be someone who's self-diagnosed but you're not certain or you can feel like you're very certain and you're not diagnosed but whatever it may be all these things can happen at the same time but I think it's just really important to be able to be honest with ourselves and be like hey I don't have this knowledge I can't be certain of this but this is where is most likely from what I feel and from what I experience and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And if you do have access to go to a doctor, go to a specialist, go to an expert, 
I encourage you to go to that so that you can get the confirmation you need. And sometimes you might have to go to multiple. But I do think it's important to have your ideas and your assumptions challenged by people who know more. So with mental health issues, I feel that people know themselves best at times. So it's a little hard to explain it, but kind of like how if you're going through the chronic issues or the physical issues, you know what your pain is like. You know what you're feeling. No one can go and tell you, oh, no, your pain isn't that bad. Like, you don't know what I'm feeling. Um, you can't speak for me in my experience and the pains that I'm feeling. It's the same thing with mental health issues to an extent. But that same layer of expertise and knowledge that you might not have because you're not educated on these topics in the amount of in, in the way that someone who's studying it would be. You can only be so certain, but you can be very confident about what you're experiencing mentally. And I also think that that's valid. Um, nothing in the medical world is clear cut. You know, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. There's a lot of assumptions that can be made. You can have a misdiagnosis, you know, so much can go wrong. And that's just the reality of living in a complex world and our bodies being complex. You know, that's just a natural result of that. And so like the re idea behind that is that people can get it wrong. There are going to be people who get it wrong and there's no avoiding that. So people get it wrong with physical, you know, health issues. People get it wrong with mental health issues. You know, none of this is without complexity. But I think that given the state of a person, if they're able to properly educate themselves about their struggles, you know, they should have a say in their diagnosis to an extent. You know, and this can be respectfully determined on an individual basis. Like, okay... This individual clearly knows a lot that's going on with their themselves and they seem to be very confident about that this is what they're experiencing. So we should consider this when we are looking into, you know, what to diagnose them or like, you know, what to help, what medications we can provide them or whatever support we can provide them. You know, that should be a part of that. But there might be a situation where someone is not in the state of mind to make those observations about themselves. And in those cases, I can understand why some people might decide for them. But I still think that no one's in a position to ever tell you how you feel. And I think that that should always be considered when anybody is going through this process. But obviously, each situation is different and it will require a different approach. I don't agree that self-diagnosis in this manner is wrong, even for physical health issues, because there are a lot of ways for people to have a very deep understanding of their physical and mental health related issues to the point where they just need someone to listen to them instead of trying to tell them what they feel. And I think that that's important. We need that in the medical world. We need people who are going to speak up for themselves and tell people, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I think. You're here to help me. You're not here to tell me how I feel. Um, so, like, I think that's an important part of this process. But I do think that when it comes to mental health issues, that is definitely where I feel more safe with self-diagnosis. Uh, with physical issues, I feel like there's just, it's a lot more difficult to, you know, not have the knowledge or the full knowledge and to ever feel certain about it. But I feel like with me, I was certain with being autistic. And I feel like, you know, that is more reasonable. I can understand someone coming down to be like, oh, I have ADHD or, oh, I have, I might be autistic or, you know, I might have OCD. I feel like, that makes a lot of sense to be able to come down to that conclusion because you know what you're going through in your mind. You know what you're experiencing. You know how your life is impacted by who you are and how you behave. You know, that's valid. But 
the human body is just extremely complex, so what we think could be one thing could easily be something else. So I always am cautious with any of the assumptions I make about my physical health. I'm always open about the fact that, hey, this is what I feel like I'm experiencing. This is what I think, but I can't be certain. And just like a lot of the doctors that I go to can't be certain. Like <laughs> a lot of them have no idea what I have or what I'm going through or, or anything like that because it's just difficult to know. So I'm not going to go around and assume I know for sure either, but I will continue to educate myself. And I think that that's something that everyone should do regardless. So uh, I wanted to get, you know, talk more about accessibility because I think that's really important. Um, and the reality is that, like, especially in America, uh, access to physical and mental health resources are just not easy you know you're not evenly divided so if you don't have health insurance you end up paying a lot even like you end up paying a lot of money just to get the support you need and even if you have health insurance some procedures won't be covered or they're still too expensive or they're inaccessible for an assortment of reasons whatever it may be it's very clear that not everyone has the ability and the access to mental health or physical health resources, you know, that others may have. So given this knowledge, I'm very careful to say that someone cannot self-diagnose themselves, especially if they have done their due diligence. Because there are a lot of people who have been going through something for years and they're very educated on it. You know, they're very certain, but they just don't have the resources and the ability to get that official diagnosis from somebody. And that's really valid. And there's also been cases of people who do have doctors that they can go to or specialists. And those people are just not up to date on the things that are being, you know, brought up with, you know, online or with new studies, with new research. Sometimes there can be doctors or people who are left in, you know, left in the past a little bit. They don't update their knowledge. And if that's who you happen to have access to, you're probably not going to get what you need from them. You're probably not going to get a diagnosis. You're probably not going to get the proper support you need. You know, all of that stuff is possible and it happens to people. So with all that said, I can't sit there and try to tell someone you can't self-diagnose yourself when I know that those you know realities are out there and can have an impact on somebody and what you know what they can do to help themselves so for instance myself like I may never get an official diagnosis for ADHD but ADHD meds help me tremendously and the only reason I'm on them is because I have a psychiatrist that was willing to give them to me without a diagnosis. So I'm a self-diagnosed adhd -er. You know, I take ADHD meds and I follow a lot of tips and tricks for adhd -ers. I do a lot of research on it. You know, I do whatever I can to support myself. And I've reached out, you know, to a psychiatrist to get more support. And the one that I found, you know, is, you know, on the same page with me and sees the progress that I've made as a result. But I've been to a lot of psychiatrists that would refuse to do anything like that, to give me anything uh, ADHD related because I didn't have an official diagnosis. And when I would question about how to get that, you know, I'm told all these things and, you know, I, I might have to pay like so much money just to do it and insurance might not cover it. And it's like, I don't even want to bother myself with that type of mess. Like, that's too much stress for me. You know, I'm certain of this. I, I feel like I know myself and what I'm experiencing, what I'm going through on a day to day basis. So, like, I don't need to, to you know, put so much money into a diagnosis that I'm already certain I have. So for me, finding a psychiatrist that's on the same page as me that understands that conflict and that was willing to give me medication without an official diagnosis, that has allowed me to 
you know, really have a, you know, my life has changed for the better ever since I've been on ADHD medication. But, you know, not everyone has that, you know, that psychiatrist that is on that same page with them like that. And I think that is just something that I'm really, I have a lot of sympathy for. So for me personally, you know, my, my therapist knows, you know, I, my partners might know, my psychiatrist might know, you know, all these people that really like that matter to me or and know a lot about my personal, you know, mental health issues and, you know, physical health issues and all of that, you know, they're the ones who know what's up and they're the only ones that really matter. So like, it doesn't matter to me if, you know, Freddy across the street doesn't think my diagnosis is valid. You know, you do whatever you want, Freddy. But, you know, I, I did what I had to do for myself. I know what's right for me. You don't know what's right for me. So I seek help for myself because I'm self-diagnosed and I'm relying. And I don't have an official diagnosis that I can rely on. And, you know, if I didn't self-diagnose... If I didn't take any of the steps that I've taken to help myself, I would not be where I am right now. And I would spend the majority of my life not understanding any of my struggles or getting any help for it. Self-diagnosis is the, you know, the gateway to resources, support, help, and everything that can make someone's life better. And... You know, if they find out they might have something, you know, they might find resources online that help them. But if they didn't go through that self-diagnose or diagnosis stage to begin with, they probably wouldn't have gotten there. I know I wouldn't have gotten here. So I when it comes to accessibility, realizing that not everyone has the privileges I have. And even some people even had more privileges than me, like some people got diagnosed with these things as children and got support from a young age and nobody questioned them or you know made them feel like they didn't have these things that's something that I can't relate to but I also have gotten access to health you know resources that other people would never have access to or struggle to have access to and I recognize that and I use that to help me you know understand that self-diagnosis is important because there's a lot of people who don't have the access to the things I have. And, you know, that self-diagnosis stage can be life-changing for them. So I'm not going to take that away from them and pretend that I know what's best for them when I don't know them. And I don't know their life experiences or how much they know, how much, you know, research they put into what they're going through. I can't know that. So I can't make any assumptions. And I feel like if anybody considers accessibility and the impact that has on this issue, you would definitely be a little bit more sympathetic and a little bit more understanding of self-diagnosis and why it's a thing and why people feel like it's valid and it's okay for them to do. And then the final topic or point I wanted to hit on with this is uh, the difference between diagnosis and treatment. I think this is really important to clarify. And uh, I just wanted to thank uh, Smug on stream for mentioning this because this is something that I didn't think too much about. But it is really important and I want to hit on it. Um, I definitely might come back to this topic because I feel like there's so much to say in this topic and I, I definitely not get all of it out here um but you can always diagnose yourself but whether or not you treat yourself as if you are certain is a different you know question altogether treating yourself means you're taking action on yourself you're doing something and if you don't have all the knowledge available you can potentially really hurt yourself or harm yourself and others and I think that's really important to be realistic about. I do not think anyone should treat more serious physical health issues on their own. 
um i know given the accessibility issues that that's hard to say but you're always safer just going to the people who know what they're doing because you can really end up hurting yourself you know or others and i think the risk of that is too is too large it's too major to ignore you know, being able to do things to your own body or anyone else's body requires extensive knowledge and understanding of the human body and how it works. And it may even require an understanding of your body that is unachievable without the proper medical resources and tests and things like that. Like you might have a certain condition that you don't know about that you can really uh, trigger or harm yourself by trying to do too much to your body when you don't know enough about your body. So I think when it comes to serious physical health issues, um, you definitely should not be treating yourself. You can self-diagnose yourself if you think you're, if you think you know what's going on, but that is way different than trying to treat yourself. So the goal here is to just remind yourself that you never you should never assume you know enough on your own, you know, to make any physical treatment choices on your own body or anyone else's when you don't have the necessary knowledge to do so. But I will say when it comes to mental health issues, there are a lot of ways you can try to treat yourself that aren't too dangerous or harmful. But you should still consult a doctor if you have access to that. So, like, if you want to take, like, supplements or things like that, you know, that stuff can be good for you. And it could help you if you do the right research. But your body, once again, is unique. So one person's experience is not going to exactly be your experience. Which is why a lot of these resources say, oh, consult your doctor. Make sure that this is okay for you to take. Because you don't know. Maybe your body won't respond well to something and that's important to know. So you can definitely take steps on your own, like natural choices, uh, you know, changing your diet, changing health choices or, you know, different things you do in your life. You can make changes in that way, treat yourself, but you should not be trying to medicate yourself or get drugs illegally or anything like that when you don't have the knowledge to ensure that that's okay for you to do. You do not know enough to assume what medications or treatments you should take based off of whatever, you know, assumptions or self-diagnosis or conclusions you think you've come down to. You should never be taking medications and drugs without the consulting experts and people who know your body and how these medications and drugs work. So although diagnosis may be valid, treatment should be thoroughly considered beforehand. And most of the time, you shouldn't be engaging with any type of treatment without the proper resources and expert advice. You know, experts matter. Like you don't want to, you don't want to appeal to authority where you would just assume that they know everything. You want to realize that they're people who make mistakes and don't know it all as well. But these they're people who are educated on these matters for a reason. You know, there are a lot of other ways you can help yourself without treating yourself physically. And I think that is what can also be a benefit of self-diagnosis. As long as you're not trying to do too much treatment on your own to where it can be harmful or dangerous. Especially people who, you know, there's so many, oh man, it's just. This is so much. There's so many like toxic like health solutions online where it's like, oh, your kid's autistic. Well, you can give them like lead from this thing and that and that will help. Like stuff like that is all over the Internet, like just not safe medical suggestions and treatments and things that people think they know it all about. But if anybody who has any expert knowledge on these topics were to look at those, you know, suggestions, they would see that the flaws in it. 
and how dangerous it is. And I feel like that's where self-diagnosis and thinking you know something more than experts can be a problem because you can end up hurting yourself by trying to take matters into your own hands and not, you know, consulting experts or someone who might know more than you. Or you could spread misinformation and harmful medical advice to other people and harm them. And I think that, you know, to an extent, we have to be realistic that some people know more about these topics than us and we should be listening to that. But also, don't pretend that this isn't still a human with faults that can make faults and that doesn't know everything. But you got to admit that your knowledge is not at that level too. And that you should be consulting somebody that knows more about your body, about, you know, the right kind of treatments for you, you know, the right kind of medications, you know, whatever it may be, you know, there's always going to be someone out there who has more knowledge or understanding of that. So you can bring to them what you've found out and what you've learned over the years. But you should not be taking matters into your own hands. And there are a lot of people who try to do that. And they're literally spreading harm and misinformation out into the world. And that's when things like that can be dangerous. We're like, imagine there's a website where it's like, oh, yeah, um, you know, self-diagnosis is valid. Um, you can diagnose yourself as autistic. And then once you do that, you should be taking all this stuff to help you not be this way or that way you know someone could come across that and think that okay this is valuable information they're they're validating my diagnosis but be careful that you know be careful to just trust anything you hear from you know certain people even from certain experts like really make sure you do your due diligence because um, there's a lot of misinformation out there and you just don't have all the information you need to make a decision with certainty. And that's okay. Um, you do what you can do. You do what you have access to. You know, you can find support groups and communities online. You know, you can do research to try and make healthier, you know, lifestyle changes that may benefit your issues. There are safer steps you can take. If you self-diagnose, but you don't want to risk harming yourself or spreading misinformation. And, you know, you can be valid in your self-diagnosis, educate yourself, help others, but just do so safely and make sure that you are being honest with yourself that, hey, I don't have all the information I need to be certain, but I'm making sure that what I do, you know, spread out to other people is accurate or, you know, supported by people who know what they're talking about. You know, our bodies are just far too complex to forget that we cannot know it all. Like, we cannot know it all about our mental health. We cannot know it all about our physical health. We haven't gotten to that point yet, and it, it probably will never happen. We'll learn more over time, but, you know, there's always going to be, you know, information that we're missing. And... Because there's a chance for that, you should always make sure that you are open or willing to consult people who might know more. And hopefully, you know, make sure you're getting information from someone worth trusting. But um, with all of that, I feel like those are the few different categories or different perspectives you can look at this issue from. I would say for myself... I may be a little bit of a fence sitter, but I definitely am more so on the side of self-diagnosis being okay. But I also know that it can be harmful in some ways, especially if people start trying to take too many matters into their own hands when they don't have the knowledge to do so. That's when things can get really harmful and really dangerous. When people start to make their own treatments as if they have the ability to do so when they don't understand their own problems in you know everyone else's bodies enough to do so that is when it can get harmful and that's that's the reality of it but is it okay yes because there are a lot of people out there who don't have access to 
the resources or the support they need to get an official diagnosis or they're just people who like you know they can't be they just they don't they're too afraid to reach out or they they don't know enough or whatever it may be so them self-diagnosing and, and getting support online or anywhere is better than them just staying in the dark so whatever it may be um I think that self-diagnosis in the end of the day is okay. You know, as long as you're not overdoing it and you're being safe about it. So for me, I've been self-diagnosed autistic for like a lot of, like many years. Then finally got an official diagnosis. But every other thing that I've learned about myself that I might have since then, I don't have any way to get officially diagnosed. But... I may self-diagnose and I, I reach out to other communities. I try to find support in communities online. I try to educate myself and make sure that I know what I'm talking about. So when I do talk to people who are experts, they can help me the best that they can with the knowledge I'm bringing. I feel like taking responsibility for my health and you know doing as much as I can to ensure that I get the help I need is the best that I can do in my position. And I hope that, you know, anybody listening or anyone who struggles with this topic, you just do the best you can do in your situation and wherever you have access to. And hopefully one day uh, in America, um, people will have equal access to healthcare and the support they need because right now that's not a thing and that just means that so many people, the only option they have is to self-diagnose and seek help and support elsewhere. And I'm never going to be the one, the one to take that away from them because I don't know what it's like to never have access to that because I have a diagnosis for at least my autism. Um, but yeah, when it comes to OCD or ADHD, I get that and I've... I feel like I know a lot about those issues and how they apply to me and I can bring that knowledge to my psychiatrist or anyone that I talk to on a higher level and that's great and that's valid and uh, I think that self-diagnosis overall is valid as long as you're being safe and considering the, the ways that can make it harmful as well. But yeah, that's gonna be it for me on this topic, I think. Or at least for now. I feel like I can like come to this topic again and like talk about it for like another five years. I don't know. It's just an interesting topic, but I picked a few categories I wanted to hit on, you know. My mentality of being a fence sitter and how I feel like that that really fits into anything related to medical issues. You know, how important it is to differentiate physical and mental health issues, you know. And like, you know, people's experiences are valid, but we have to be realistic about our own limits and the knowledge we have. Accessibility is a big issue because we all have different ac access levels. Some of us have more access than others and some of us do not. And I think it if you're someone who has more access and you're like, oh, self-diagnosis isn't valid, okay? You should just do this and this without realizing why that's not always possible for certain people. I think that's not helpful either. And really making the distinction between diagnosing versus treatment and being careful about whatever information you spread out there as treatment and things like that, you can really cause a lot of harm and um, just spread a lot of misinformation. So self-diagnosis, valid, but trying to treat yourself when you don't know enough, you know, that's something else entirely. And I don't necessarily agree with that unless you're being safe about it. But yeah, that's going to be it for me on this one. Um, it was a good, it was a good discussion. I, I really like talking about disability issues and hopefully I can talk about uh, some more of it soon. But yeah, for now, I'm just going to say goodbye and you can listen to the song that...
practice made that uh, I'm also going to ask him to make me another one soon. So, yeah. 